Welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Eckelbarger. It's Monday again, and that means Lucille Ball and Richard Denning in My Favorite Husband. This episode is number 63 of the series, and it is entitled Katie and Mr. Nagley. It originally aired on November 18th, 1949. As we look in on the Coopers, it's morning, and Liz and George are at the breakfast table. George tastes his scrambled eggs, then he turns to Liz and he says, (coughs) What's the matter, George? Where's Katie, Liz? Did she quit? No, she's in the kitchen. Why? The eggs are underdone, the toast is burned, and the coffee is like mud. I thought maybe you cooked breakfast. Well, thanks a lot. I'll tell Katie to fix you something else. No, no, no. I'll eat this. It brings back memories. Of what? Of what? The army? No. No, when we were first married. A lot you know. You were so lovey-dovey at breakfast in those days. You wouldn't have known if I was feeding you sawdust. So that's what it was. One more crack like that, and I'll fire Katie, and I'll cook for you all the time. I take it back. I take it back. Oh, please, you wouldn't do that, all would you? Right. Have a... All right, you made your point. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with Katie anyway? This food is awful. Oh, poor Katie, it isn't her fault. Her romance with Mister Negley, the mailman, isn't going so well. Well, just because her love life is upset, there's no reason why my stomach has to follow suit. Oh, now, George, don't start anything. I'll get you some more toast. Katie, some more toast, please. Coming. Oh, here you are. Who gets it? I do. Thank you, Katie. Yeah. Liz, this is toast? Sure it is. Plain bread doesn't smoke like that. Well, what am I supposed to do with it? Well, here, take this paper napkin and make charcoal sketches. Now, look, temperament is all right, but when it starts to interfere... Oh, now, George, Katie has a problem. She and Mr. Nagley have been dating for three years, and she feels they're not getting any place. Well, at their age, I doubt if it's worth the trip. (laughs) George, gee, I wish I could help her. Mr. Negley is so shy, he'll never propose. You stay out of it. And why doesn't Katie leave the poor guy alone? Doesn't a woman ever reach the point where she can sit back and forget about men? Yes. But you don't sit back, you lie back, and they put a lily in your hand. (laughs) Look, did it ever occur to you that Mr. Negley may not want to get married? But, George, he's a man. What's he got to say about it? True. My goodness, if it were up to the men. Oh, what a frightening thought. Why, we might even, we might not even have been married. And where would you be today? George, get that dreamy look off your face. <laughs> Sorry. George, where were you just then? Oh, I was enjoying life in my swanky bachelor's apartment. Were you alone? Nope. Who was with you? Mr. Negley. Oh. I was just teasing, honey. I'd advise everyone to get married if they can be half as happy as we've been. You really mean that, don't you, George? Yes, sir. And if I had it to do all over again, I'd still say yes when you propose. I propose? Ha! You kneel down so many times in our living room, my father thought you were teaching me to shoot crap. Well, I I hope I see Mr. Negley in time. I'd better warn him that Katie's planning to get a wedlock headlock on him. Now, you just leave us alone. We're only trying to get her engaged. That'll keep her happy. What's the matter? Who is this we you refer to? Are you playing Cupid again? I don't know what you're talking about. You said we're only trying to get her engaged. Who is we? Now, George. Who is we? Who is we? We is Liz and George Cooper. That's who we is. Now, 
You know what I mean. Well, now, George, there's no sense bothering your pretty little head about Katie's problem. No, it's not my pretty little head that bothers me. It's your great big nose. <laughs> oh, come now. Uh, figuratively speaking. You just can't stay out of other people's romance. I can to you. For your information, I haven't said a word to Katie. Well, just keep it that way. Well, what if she asks me for my advice? Well, what makes you think she'll ask you? I can arrange it. Exactly. <laughs> but if she only knew how, she could hook Mr. Negley that, that fast. Well, it wouldn't do her any good. He's too small, and she'd have to throw him back in. <laughs> oh, but think of the fun. Liz, I'm serious. I want you to promise me you won't meddle in Katie's romance in any way whatsoever. In any way whatsoever? Yes. I want your solemn promise you won't even speak to her about it. Now, you promise? But I... Promise? All right, I promise, George. I won't meddle. Good. I won't even talk to Katie about it. I'll keep my mouth shut until I'm ready to explode. And even past that. Okay. But when you come home tonight, don't be surprised if you find me splattered all over the wall. <laughs> Sing the blues. I got a right to moan and cry. Oh, Katie, do you really feel that sad? No. <laughs> oh, I wish there was something I could do, Katie, but I promised George I wouldn't meddle in your romance. Oh, oh Katie. I promised George I wouldn't talk about it, but I didn't say I wouldn't listen about it. Oh? If you talked and I just listened, would that uh, constitute a medal? I don't think so. Well, I'm all ears. Well, the trouble is, Mr. Negley and I never get to be alone. He couldn't propose if he wanted to. But you have a couple of dates a week. Where do you go? We always go to a drive-in movie. A drive-in movie? Why, that's a perfect place for romance. Do you sit in the back seat? Oh, yes, I always do. <laughs> And he sits in the front seat. Now, that's where you made your mistake. You should both sit in the back seat. On a motorcycle? <laughs> oh, Katie. You might as well go on a pogo stick. Oh, you do have a problem. Uh, maybe you could get him to invite you to his house to dinner. No, he'll never do that. Oh, you can't be sure. Yes, I can. He lives at the YMCA. <laughs> well, maybe he'll invite you over for a game of handball and a steam some night. Oh, I'm just sunk, Mrs. Cooper. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What about the park? Oh, we've been there. The cop in the park is Mr. Negley's pal. We sat there all evening. Well, what happened? Three-handed canasta. <laughs> I finally got mad and said, two's company, three's a crowd. So Mr. Negley left. <laughs> I've got it, Katie. I know where you two can be alone. Uh-oh. Oh, I can't tell you. I promised George. Oh, couldn't you break your promise? Certainly not. I'd die before I'd ever tell you that I might talk George into going to a movie tonight so you and Mr. Negley can have our living room to yourself. Oh, Mrs. Cooper, do you mean that? Mean what? Uh, that you'll talk Mr. Cooper into going to a movie so Mr. Negley and I can have your living room. Why, Katie, that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> Thank you. How'd you ever think of it? Oh, it just came to me. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll take care of George. The living room is yours for the evening. Oh, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> I don't know how to thank you. Oh, it's all right, Katie. I've caught my limit. The least I can do is help a fellow trapper. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, Mrs. Cooper, Mr. Negley's coming up the wall. Oh, calm down, Katie. What are you so excited about? Everything's all set for you. Oh, I'm too nervous to ask him. <laughs> you do it for me. Oh, I thought I was Mr. Anthony. Now I'm John Alden. <laughs> Katie, are you sure you wouldn't like... <laughs> uh, I guess you wouldn't. Okay, I'll ask him. Oh, thanks. 
Hello, Mr. Nagley. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Cooper. How are you today? <laughs> oh, I'm terribly fatigued. Do you mind if I droop on your stoop? No, not at all. I'll just rest a minute before I go plunging on with my bag of postal goodies. Uh, Mr. Negley, uh, you have a date with Katie tonight, don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're, we're going to the drive-in movie. Well, instead of going there, how would you like to stay right here all evening? Oh, that sounds like fun. I thought you'd feel that way. But what would I tell Katie? <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I mean with Katie. Oh, I thought you meant with you and Mr. Cooper. <laughs> no, Mr. Cooper and I are going to be away all evening, and you and Katie can have the living room all to yourself. No. Alone? All alone. How does that sound? Oh, frightening. <laughs> Just me and Turtle Dog? Yes. Yes, Turtle Dove would have asked you herself, but she got shy. She's in the house with her head under her wing. <laughs> what do you say? Well, I don't know. There's a pretty good picture playing at the drive-in. Mr. Negley, they haven't made the picture that's, that, that's that good. Anyway, Katie wants you to come for dinner. Oh, that's different. I like her cooking. Yes, it'll be nice and cozy, and after dinner, you'll go in the living room. There'll be music on the radio. The lights will be turned down low. And you can sit together on the couch. And then what will we do? <laughs> what any other man would do, bring your motorcycle in and give it a grease job. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. My motorcycle hasn't been greased in weeks. <laughs> Megley, I think something is escaping you. Mm -hmm. Let me put it this way. When you're out riding on your motorcycle and you go around the curve, does Katie put her arms around your waist? Well, well she didn't used to, and something awful happened. What? She fell off. <laughs> so I told her the next time we went around the curve, she should hold on to me. Did she? Yes. What happened? We both fell off. There aren't many ways left to put it, but, um, Katie feels if you and she are alone tonight, you'll get to know each other better. <laughs> I think I struck a nerve. Uh, can you make it tonight, Mr. Negley? Well, you only live once. In your case, that's a pretty high estimate. Uh, I'll tell Katie to expect you. Yes, I'll rush right home now and start dressing. Wait a minute. Don't you have to deliver the rest of the letters in your sack? No, I don't have time. I'll mail them. Uh, that doesn't sound just right. Doesn't sound... Oh, I forgot. I'm the mailman. I'll deliver them in a hurry. Goodbye, Mrs. Cooper. Bye. Yeah, I'm in Canton evening. You will see a stranger. You will see... What do you say, Mrs. Cooper? What do you say? Mr. Negley accepted his turtle dove's invitation. <gasps> Did he call me that in front of you? Yes, and I'm curious. What do you call him? My little pigeon. <laughs> now, you two don't need a living room. Why don't you just sit side by side on a telephone wire? <laughs> oh, I don't know how to thank you, Mrs. Cooper. Well, it's up to you now, Katie. You've got the man and the place and the time. I'll guarantee to keep George out of the house until 1130. No matter what happens, I won't come home before then. Gosh, do you think I can get him to pop the question? Oh, sure. Stuff him with food, pour on a little oil, and before you know it, your little pigeon will be a dead duck. Katie and Mr. Negley are using the Cooper living room, and Liz is faced with the problem of keeping George out until 11.30 without telling him why. At this moment, we find them in a movie. Ah, ma petite chérie... Before we part forever, kiss me. Well, this 
is where we came in, Liz. Let's go. Oh, but it's only 9.30. We can't go yet. What? I mean, my, my shoe. Uh, that's it. My sh- I lost my shoe. What's it? I can't find my shoe. Well, look for it. I can't bend over. I got my new girdle on. <laughs> you get it for me. Ah, kiss me again. Have you got it, George? No. Well, what are you doing down there? I'm stuck on some gum. <laughs> Why, hey, 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 cut it out, cut it out. Oh. Oh, here it is. I've got it. You have? Yes, here's your shoe. Now, is there any reason why we can't go? Yes, this isn't my shoe. <laughs> what? Put it back. Kiss <laughs> uh, <just> me again. <laughs> oh, here it is. Oh. All right, we're going. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Oh, my leg's asleep. Hey, what about your shoe, Liz? My shoe? Oh, here it is, George, in my purse. Oh, oh great. Ah, uh, kiss me again. Listen, Liz, they're playing our tune. Aren't you finished with that drink? Wait a minute. There. Good. Now let's go home. Uh, what time is it? What is this time kick? It's 10.15. Oh, is that all? Uh, I think I'll have another malt. But, Liz, you've had four already. What's the matter with you? I drink too fast. Uh, yes, ma'am. Another malt, please. Another malt? Yes, ma'am. You've had every one of our flavors. Which would you like to repeat? Oh, it doesn't matter. Say, I think you might like an idiot's jubilee. (laughs) What's that? Well, it's like a banana split, only you use a pickle. (laughs) Pickle? Yes, or you might like our eagle's nest. What's that? Well, it has a base of pound cake and macaroon. And on top of that, a scoop of mocha, black walnut, oh. pistachio, peppermint, oh, no. burnt almond, and tutti frutti. Oh. And then a layer of whipped cream, a layer of chopped nuts, a layer of marshmallows, and a layer of cherries. Well, I... Uh... And then you flood the whole thing with hot fudge. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter, Liz? Don't you want any more? I don't even want what I've had. Well, home at last. How do you feel, Liz? Oh, I'm all right. I'm glad you rescued me from that eagle's nest. What time is it? Quarter to eleven. Exactly one minute later than the last time you asked me. Now, come on. But we can't go in till 11.30. Oh. And why can't we go in till then? Now, if I tell you, will you promise not to be mad? I'm not so sure. Cross your heart and hope to die. All right. Cross my heart and hope to die. Scout's honor. Scout's honor. May lightning strike you. All right. What is it? (laughs) Well... Katie's entertaining Mr. Negley in the living room, and I promised we'd stay out till 11.30. Liz, this is the last straw of all... You promised? You promised you wouldn't get mad. Scout's honor. Now, forget that stuff. Well, I've trusted my last Boy Scout. (laughs) You turn in your merit badges, Cooper. Now, come on, Liz. We're going in the house right now. But, George, this last half hour may be the most important one. Good. Maybe we can still save Mr. Nagel. I know I shouldn't have done it, and I'm sorry, but let's wait, huh, please? Well, what do you want me to do? Sit here in the car with you for half an hour? Well, that's a compliment. Before we were married, you used to hang onto my arm and whimper, Please, baby doll, stay out five more minutes. It's early yet. Well, 
Never mind. Come on, let's go in. Dear diary, today, after 11 glorious years, the honeymoon is over. <laughs> now, don't try that. I'm mad at you. It's all right, George. I understand that a man doesn't want to sit out in the car late at night when he reaches your age. <laughs> What do you mean, my age? Oh, nothing. I just meant that when you get uh, to your time of life, a car is just something to be used for transportation. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, you seem to forget that I was the only guy in school who could shift gears with his knee. <laughs> But that was a long time ago. Well, just for that, Liz Cooper, I'm going to kiss you like you've never been kissed before. Dear diary, stand by for a rewrite. <laughs> hmm, that's funny. What? I can't turn around. The steering wheel's in the way. In the old days, the cars were built different. In the old days, the stomach was built different. <laughs> Yeah? Come here, woman. Yes, man. <laughs> George, what time is it? Twelve thirty. <gasps> George, we've been sitting here in the car for an hour and a half. Come on, let's go in. Oh, please, baby doll. Stay out five. It's there. George, now come on. Well, Mr. Nagley ought to be gone by now. Well, how can we make sure? It's dark in there. I know, George. Boost me up to the hall window. I'll see if his cap and mailbag are still there. Uh, all right. Uh, put your foot in my hand. Okay. Oh, there. Uh, do you see anything? No, nope, not a thing. Doesn't look like a soul is home. Let me down. Uh, now, do you think it's safe to go in? I think so. I don't. <laughs> Policeman. And what do you two think you're doing? Oh. Uh, well, I, I know it looks funny, officer, but we live here. Sure you do. We do. We're Mr. and Mrs. George Cooper, and we live in this house. Don't you believe us? Oh, absolutely. You're peeking in the window to see if you're home. <laughs> and that's why you set out in front for an hour and a half casing the joint. <laughs> oh, now, now, wait a minute. We were out there... Uh, well... What my husband is trying to say is, we were sitting out in front, smooching. I thought you said you were married. <laughs> we are, and we were smooching. Oh, sure you were. And I was sitting in the patrol car across the street playing footsie with Sergeant McDougal. <laughs> you come with me. But we're telling you the truth. It doesn't matter. If you were breaking into the house, you're a couple of crooks. If you're married and you were sitting outside necking... You're dangerous mental cases. <laughs> Come along. Well, we're finally home. Yes, at 4.30 in the morning. Oh, Liz, how did I get a wife like you? I don't know. You're just lucky, I guess. <laughs> I hope this teaches you to stay out of other people's romances. Well, if Katie got her man, it was worth it, so I just don't care. Mrs. Cooper? Yes? Oh, you're home. I was worried when you stayed out so late. Yeah, we're all right, Katie. Tell me, did Mr. Negley propose? No. He didn't? No. Something came up, and he didn't come over tonight. Oh, no! <laughs> favorite husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Please send your questions and comments to host at classiccomedyotr.com. Come back next Monday for another episode of My Favorite Husband and check in on Wednesday for the next installment of The Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope. Until Wednesday, in the words of Emo Phillips, a computer once beat me at chess, but it was no match for me at kickboxing. <laughs>